Welcome to the Sayings of Jesus. In today's message, My Sheep Hear My Voice, Dr. McLuhan teaches how followers of Jesus can learn to hear the life-giving words from their Father. One of the greatest discoveries in life is learning to hear the voice of God. From the dawn of creation, Adam and Eve were designed to hear the voice of God. The entrance of sin into the world did not stop God from wanting to talk to us. But sin has a way of hardening our hearts and making it more difficult for us to hear the voice of God. Yet Noah and the patriarchs clearly heard the voice of God. But at Mount Sinai, the people asked God to speak to Moses and not to them. What tragic words. You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 19. After that, the voice of God was heard through the judges and through prophets and through kings. And as the people continued to move away from God, the voice of God grew more and more distant. After the prophet Malachi died, the voice of God was not heard for 400 years. And then out of that silence came the voice of John the Baptist and of Jesus. Jesus came to destroy the lie that God cannot have a personal relationship with his people. Ask God to use this message to open your heart and your ears to hear his voice. So speaking to religious leaders, Jesus said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them in and they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. John chapter 10 and verse 16. Jesus was talking about the Jews and the Gentiles becoming one flock with him as their shepherd. What wonderful words these are. Then he spoke about the importance of his crucifixion. The crucifixion was no surprise. It was in the plan of God the Father, and Jesus willingly participated. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my father. John chapter 10 and verse 18. What a remarkable statement. It focuses for everyone that neither the Jews nor the Romans had any real authority over Jesus. Jesus willingly allowed himself to be crucified so he could pay for the sins of all the people of the world. And this statement prepared the way for one of the most important conversations Jesus had with the religious leaders. <clears throat> he waited until the Feast of Dedication or the Feast of Lights to give this teaching. Now, the more popular name for this feast is Hanukkah, and you know how that's celebrated every Christmas. Still to celebrate it today during the month of December. John chapter 10, verse 22 and 23, we read, At that time... The feast of the dedication took place in the temple. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the column of Solomon. I've had the privilege of walking in that colonnade and thinking about the words that Jesus said. It was the last major teaching that Jesus gave before he was crucified. And so the Jewish leaders asked him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly, John chapter 10 and verse 24. And Jesus replied by saying, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not amongst my sheep. What scathing words to say to the religious leaders. John chapter 10, verse 25 and 26. I want to remind you that Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, had already said this to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. John chapter 3 and verse 10. Now Jesus, 
is ready to release one of his most precious sayings. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10 and verse 27. It is a beautiful thing to watch a shepherd call his or her sheep. You're accustomed to men being shepherds, but in many places in the Middle East, it's women's work. And it's beautiful to see sheep come to their shepherd because they hear the voice of the one calling them. They come running because they do not respond to the voice of a stranger. Jesus wants people to hear his voice, especially so for those who are his followers. You can hear the voice of Jesus. Invite Jesus to say something to you right now. You'll know it's his voice as he speaks to you. Whether you're in the house or watching online, say with me, Father, open my heart to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to me as I'm listening or speak to me as I'm listening. If you just heard the voice of Jesus, raise your hand in the house. (laughs) Yeah, look at that. And if you heard the voice online, message me. And tell me that you've heard the voice of Jesus speaking to you. Hearing God's voice usually begins with Jesus saying, follow me. This is how all of the disciples were called. They heard Jesus say, follow me. And something inside of them said, I need to do that. I remember when Jesus called me and I knew I needed to respond. I knew it was not my voice. It was definitely not Satan's voice. It was the voice of Jesus. As I'm speaking, Jesus is opening the hearts of people to follow him right now. Last week, I was speaking with a man in Zambia, and I asked him a question I often ask. Have you already had the joy of following Jesus and having your name written in the book of heaven? I was so surprised. He said, nope. (laughs) And then I heard the voice of Jesus say to me, ask him. Is there anything stopping you from following Jesus right now? And he said, no. And so I shared the message of Jesus with him. What a blessing. Now, sadly, for many people, hearing Jesus call them to follow him is often the last time they hear the voice of Jesus. And that is not what Jesus wants. He wants to talk to you every day. Listen to why Jesus wants you to hear his voice. It's because he knows us. And that word for knowing is an intimate knowledge, not a head knowledge, but a knowing about everything that you're going through in life. Jesus knows everything about you, not to condemn you, but to help you overcome the challenges that you are facing. Jesus is not ashamed of you because he knows everything about you. Because his invitation is based upon already knowing everything about you, you can follow him without fear that one day he'll discover something about you that will cause him to reject you. Have you ever found that? When people discover things about you, your friendship suddenly dries away because they discover something they didn't expect to find in your life. You could never have that experience with God because he already knows the worst about you and is committed to calling you to follow him. Hearing the voice of Jesus is the first step towards towards becoming one of his his followers. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Now listening to this amazing promise Jesus gave to his followers, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. John chapter 10, verse 28. What a powerful promise. Now, usually I don't ask people if they have been saved. It is true that Jesus came in his own words to seek and to save the lost. That was his mission. But his method was to offer people the gift of eternal life. It is a gift that by its very nature can never end. This is a very powerful saying of Jesus. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like a saying like this in the Quran. Listen to this tragic saying of Muhammad. I am nothing new amongst the prophets. What will happen to me and my followers, I do not know. 
I am only a plain warner. And most people know the Quran by the chapter names, which is called dunes or hills. And those reading it by chapter number, it's chapter 46 and ayat verse 9. What a tragic statement. Jesus knew what would happen to him after the crucifixion. He returned to the Father just as he was promised. And he promised that all of his followers would be with him in heaven. We can know where we are going because Jesus knew where he was going. We are going directly to heaven to live in the presence of the Father for all of eternity. Jesus continued by saying, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. John chapter 10 and verse 29. You don't need to worry about slipping through the hands of Father. His hands are strong enough to hold you no matter what you face. When my children were younger, they faced many dangers they didn't even know about. And one of these dangers is the simple thing of crossing a street. And when we would come to a crossing, I would say to them, please hold my hand and keep Daddy safe. And of course, they gladly held my hand. But who was keeping them safe? Of course, it was me. And when you put your hands in the hand of Jesus, he will keep you safe no matter what you're facing. Jesus finished this powerful saying by saying these words, I and the Father are one, John chapter 10 and verse 30. Now, this is one of the great mysteries about the life of Jesus. People back then and even today can't figure it out what it means. I'll just be honest, while I don't understand it, I know exactly what it means. When we hear the voice of Jesus, we are hearing the voice of God. And when we put our hands in the hand of Jesus, we are putting our hands in the hand of God. This is a powerful saying that Jesus has. It changed my life. I've learned to hear his voice and follow him no matter what he asks me to do. So what can we do to increase our ability to hear the voice of God? And God speaks through his word. And when we read his word, he opens our heart to hear his voice. And as we grow in our faith, God speaks to us about things not specifically in the Bible. There are many principles in the Bible. But God cares about all the details of your life, and you can hear his voice speaking to you about the details of your life. Uh, I heard the voice of Jesus speak to me. And sometimes we call this the inner voice because we hear it in our minds. One time I heard the inner voice of Jesus clearly say to me, I'm willing to heal through you. He didn't have to say that. It was his way of letting me know I'm not disqualified for healing people. Sometimes people tell me they're not holy enough to heal or they have this or that and for this reason God can't use them. He already knows and he's willing to do for you what he said to me. God is willing to heal through you I open your ears to hear that today as Jesus spoke to me. I've also heard the external audible voice of God. Doesn't happen very frequently. In fact, I only have one very positive time where I can say I heard the external voice of God. If you hear it once in your life, it's enough. And I release to you the gift of at least one time hearing the external audible voice of God. He knocked on my door, the bedroom, my, my bedroom door, one morning at 1 a.m., strange time. And he simply said, Peter, are you awake? <laughs> it took me a long time to understand the magnitude of that moment. For one thing, it's clear that he knew my name. And he also knew how to get my attention. And it was also clear that he was not asking me a physical question, but a spiritual question. If Jesus asks you a question, he's not looking for information. He's asking you to examine the depth of the question he has just asked. Now, there's much more to say about why Jesus spoke with me in an audible voice. And you can write to me and ask me and we, buy me a coffee and we can talk about that. 
My purpose today is to deepen your belief that Jesus wants to speak to you. And I believe the number one hindrance to hearing the voice of Jesus is not acting on what we hear. He does not speak to be heard. He speaks to those who will say yes to what he says. And so what can we do to increase our ability to hear the voice of God? I've already said it. As I've read the word and it's spoken to me, I invite you to read the word of God regularly. God speaks through his word. I encourage you to read with the expectation that something will jump off of the page and speak to your heart. That is why the Bible was given by the breath of God. It is a living book. It is a life-giving book. And many, many people call those verses a life verse. <clears throat> I wonder if you have a life verse. Just raise your hand. You have a life verse that guides you. It's a verse that becomes an anchor to help us overcome the storms of life. My life verse is in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. This congregation has probably heard more sermons from that text than any other text that I've spoken on. I just want to say it again. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43 18 and 19. You're welcome to join me in that as a life verse if it just spoke to you powerfully. Life verses are not exclusive to any one person. They just give life to who receives them. They're new things that God wants you to do. And here, at the dawn of my 70th decade of my life, these verses are still fueling my spirit. They're anchored to me. I'm expecting God to have new things for me to do. Now, as we develop more intimacy with the Father, he speaks to us about daily decisions that we need to make and to take. So how can we know if it's God speaking? Have you ever heard somebody say, particularly in court, I was hearing voices in my head. And the next sentence is usually dark. Often these voices cause people to do terrible things, so they claim in court. Now, here are three practical ways to know who is speaking to you. It is so amazing to me that people accept that Satan has a voice, but they deny that God has a voice. What a silly thing. And Jesus heard the voice of Satan in the desert, and his voice was the voice of temptation. It was defeat. It was despair. It is lies, and it is condemning. It sounds like this. You can't. You're not good enough. You're broken. You're too uh, full of shame. God has rejected you. God can never use you. That's the voice of Satan speaking to you. Reject this voice the way Jesus did with the word of God. Base your identity on the word of God, not the word of the devil. You are forgiven. You are loved. Jesus will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The second voice is actually your own voice. Your own voice is practical, and it's quite often problem-solving. Your natural voice helps you answer everyday questions like what to eat, when to sleep, and where to go. But sometimes Satan tries to take over our natural thoughts and twist them we can tune out the devil's voice, which is always discouraging, causing us to feel hopeless, defeated by that voice. It's a voice that says, you'll never overcome. You'll never be more than you are. Uh, sometimes we say, I feel stupid. I am stupid. I'm, I, I'm a disappointment. Sometimes that's your natural voice being twisted. Allow again the voice of God and the voice of the word to speak to you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And like Peter who was sinking, Jesus will lift you up and give you another chance. God is working all things together for your good. And the third voice, of course, is the voice of the Father. It is always affirming, unconditional in love. His voice commissions him, us, 
to join him in what he is doing. Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. I only say what I hear the Father saying. At this level, we're not doing things to earn his favor or his approval. We are simply partnering with God in the plan that he has for our life. We have the joy of partnering with him in doing what he is doing. What could be more satisfying than that? Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. John chapter 10 and verse 10. The voice of God releases abundance into our life. But he also warned, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. If you're hearing condemning voices in your head, I command that voice to stop right now. I open your ears to hear the voice of the Father speaking to you right now. As I have been speaking, you might have clearly heard Jesus call you to follow him. Today, Jesus is inviting his followers to receive the gift of eternal life. If you're not sure if you will spend eternity with God in heaven, I invite you to put your hand in the hand of Jesus. He died for you in your place on the cross so that you can spend eternity with God in his presence in heaven. Thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross and ask him to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Come, Holy Spirit. Speak to people who are listening right now. Speak to people in the room and speak to people who are watching this live stream around the world. Receive Jesus as your Savior right now. Ask him to give you the gift of eternal life. Now, Holy Spirit, come and fill each one who is yielding their life to you. Open our ears to hear your voice. Defeat the lie that we can't have a relationship with God. Help people to believe what Jesus said. I and the Father are one. It's not humanly understandable, but by your Spirit. Give revelation to somebody listening right now to this truth. God just opened your ears and heart to receive this message. Write to me and tell me what God has just said to you. Bless you with this message. Father, we accept that you are speaking to us, Father, and we tune our ears to hear your voice. Help us to discern your voice and tune out the voice of the enemy and to submit our natural voice to you, Father, for your guidance and direction. Help us to follow you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.